Okay, so let's use those uh, boundary work equations that we derived. We have equations for you know, a spring, equations for a polytropic process, isothermal expansion of ideal gas, constant pressure process, obviously a constant volume process, the boundary work would be zero. All right, let's look at this one. We've got a mass of five kilograms of saturated water vapor at 300 kPa. It's heated at a constant pressure until the temperature reaches 200 degrees C. So this is a constant pressure process. Calculate the work done by the steam uh, during this process. So the work done by the steam would be the boundary work of the steam. Uh, so the boundary work, we've got our equation for a constant pressure. Boundary work is pressure times change in volume. Pressure times change in volume. Um, we've got the pressure. Do we have the volume? Did it tell me its initial volume? Did, did it tell me its final volume? Uh, not exactly, but we'll see if we can figure this out. If we were to draw this on a PV diagram, it's at a constant pressure, uh, it's heated, so we are expanding, so we're kind of going from state one to state two at a constant pressure. The area under the curve is the boundary work. The boundary work is P delta V. That's what a constant pressure process looks like on our, our PV uh, diagram. Uh, so uh, we want the boundary work. We know the pressure. We've just got to figure out V2, V2 minus V1. Um, they didn't give us volume, did they? But they gave us mass, and they gave us some other information, right? Do you think that in a roundabout way, they may have kind of given us the specific volume, right? We, we do want capital V volume. We want the actual volume, the total volume. But um, let's see, the specific volume, total volume divided by mass. This, if I could, I think this is what I'm going to try to do. If I could do the mass 2 V2 minus the mass 1 V1, and these are lowercase v's, these are specific volumes, right? Specific volume, specific volume. All right, remember, <laughs> a lot of these problems, they're not going to give it to you on a silver platter. You're going to have to work for it. Uh, we're going to have to work to get those volumes by um, doing the specific volume. Now, this M2 is the same as M1 if this is a closed system. Uh, we, are, we are in Chapter 4, closed systems. So uh, P, take out that mass and do lowercase v2 minus v1. So what is v2? What is v1? Well, what do we know about state 1? 5 kilograms. Uh, it is saturated vapor at 300 kPa. Saturated vapor at 300 kPa. If this was a problem, then I said, hey, I have water. Um, it is saturated vapor. It's at a pressure of 300 kPa. Uh, what would you do? You would go to table A5, right? And let's go there. You would go to table A5. Here, uh, we're in SI unit, so let's go to table A5. Uh, for a pressure of 300 kPa, here it is right here. Uh, it is saturated vapor. That is the specific volume right there. That is the specific volume. All right, 0.60582. So uh, I know we're in a new chapter. We're, we've, we're done with, with test one, but you still have to use those property tables. Still have to be able to use those property tables. This one, the specific volume at state one is 0.60582 meters cubed per kilogram. 0.60582 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, got it. Also, I have all these as well. Okay, so what about state two? What is the specific volume at state two? At state two, constant pressure, so it is still at 300 kPa, uh, but it, it is being heated. Uh, the temperature reaches 200 degrees C. All right, so that, that's two pieces of information, right? That's two pieces of information to... Um, I can find everything else. Uh, so my first instinct is, okay, is it saturated? Is it a mixture? Is it superheated? Is it subcooled? 
I think you could, you could kind of guess if it was saturated vapor and we're heating it at a, and the pressure stays the same, it's going to be superheated. But I would, I would start at A4 or A5 and it would show me that my temperature is too high or it would show me, hey, my pressure is too low. Either way, it would, show, it would lead me to superheated. So I would find that it is superheated. And so I would go to table A6 for 300 kPa, 200 degrees C. So go to uh, property tables A6. Superheated for a pressure of 300 kPa. And help me out, I've been known to mess up these unit conversions, but that right there at 0.3 MPa is 300 kPa and a temperature of 200. So my V right down here, yeah, 0.71643 meters cubed per kilogram. 0.71, back to our notes, all right. V2, 0.71643 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, so now I can find the boundary work. Now I can find the boundary. The boundary would be 300 kPa, 5 kilograms, uh, and V2.71643 meters. Let me look at my units here, make sure meters cubed per kilogram, minus 0 0.60582 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, and so I, I would multiply those together, um, and the uh, my calculator would spit out 166. So what are the units here? Uh, this is kilograms, cancels out with those. Kilogram meter cubed is the same thing as a kilojoule. Let me think about this. KPA uh, is kilonewton per meter squared. And so KPA times meter cubed is kilonewton meter. A joule is a newton meter, so this is kilojoules. Um, okay, generally my, my line of thinking is when I've got PA, when I've got kilograms, when I've got meters cubed, that's going to be a joule. All right, a PA um, and meter cubed, that's going to be a joule. So maybe, maybe something else to kind of put in our repertoire. A KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. A KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. I think that might even be uh, kind of buried in our conversion factor sheet here. Um, or, well, yeah, it's probably on the conversion factor sheet. I think it's also in the property tables. All right, sorry. Going on a tangent here. But here's my thinking. Uh, if kilojoule per kilogram K is equal to KPA meter cubed, well, it's really telling me KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. KPA meter cubed is a kilojoule. Okay, so there we go. That is the boundary work for, and no, no other work done. So it didn't say anything else about any other work done. So the only work done is the boundary work. We've got an equation for boundary work for a constant volume constant pressure process, sorry, and in order to get these volumes, we had to use the specific volumes. So, we had to use property tables. All right, let's look at another one.